everybody, Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and welcome to the Metro Manila Arena. We're here in the Philippines. Our main event should be a good one tonight. Boy, and we expect this to be a big night of action. We spoke with both fighters yesterday. Fireworks anticipated here tonight. Let's see. All right, gentlemen, protect yourselves at all times. Let's touch him up. I want to see some heavy this is a 12-rounder. Here's round number one. <laughs> Defensively, I'm assuming the taller fighter in this matchup tonight really has to be conscious of protecting his body, Teddy. You know, Joe, that's a great point. We think about the taller guy only being vulnerable to the chin if the shorter man gets in, but if you're tall, there's a lot of long and usually lean body to attack. Like an arrow, and not shot by Cupid. One, two, three, four, five. Ramirez is back up, but is he back in the fight? We're going to find out in a second whether or not he moves his head. Now, if he just stands there straight, and you're the trainer, you better get up on those steps and stop it. He's not right. Good block by El Terrible. Locks that belt line well. Ramirez's punch is far off the target. Good defense just covering up down low. The Sandman's defense, is it ever good? Look at how easy he's able to block those punches. He missed with that headshot. End of okay. round one. Okay. The Sandman's gathering himself now after scoring a knockdown in that last round. If you were his trainer, what would you be pumping into his head? Well, I would say, you know what? He hasn't recovered. He hasn't had enough time to completely recover. Listen. Be responsible defensively. Don't get reckless, but stay on him. Do not let him recover. in control. So take your time. You don't need that. I'll throw that away. So this round is underway, and what a difference a break makes for him. Look at how fresh he is to start this round after getting hit hard and rocked in that last round. What a difference a rest makes when the corner knows how to take advantage of that rest. They got water on him, they revived him, they massaged his legs a little bit, gave him some encouragement, good to go. Good block by Ramirez. Teddy, early on here, you cannot stress enough how much good comes from going to the body. And you can't stress how many times you heard your parents tell you as a kid, put that chain into the piggy bank it. because it's going to add up. Well, body punches add up. Able to cover up along the belt line, blocks that one. Halfway through this round here. Ramirez is making me question how his legs are right now. I'm not sure that he's all too secure and steady on those legs after that knockdown, just like he's tying up a lot here. Yeah, well, you don't have to wonder. You're saying you're not so sure he's secure. Well, he's telling you. You know, he's right there. That's about as 
honest that a fight is ever going to be is when he's clinching. I'm telling you, I don't feel too good. And makes that nice right angle on that hook upstairs. Ramirez is stunned and he is hurt. Hey, keep fighting. Let's go. Hook, hook. Just 10 seconds to go here in the second round. And that's the end of round two. The Sandman's effort in that last round really didn't do much for him. I just don't think he was busy enough. No, he wasn't busy enough. And you start to wonder whether or not he wants to be here. It has to change quickly now because if it doesn't, his opponent is going to kind of smell it a little bit and he's going to start pushing a little bit more and put him in bad problems. Stay away from that power hand, okay? Keep circling away from that power hand. I need you to keep moving side to side, all right? Just... He seems fully recovered to me. Here we are, the start of a new round, and a fighter that got tagged hard in the last round seems as fresh as could be. Well, when you push a fighter, when you push a human being to a dark place, that's when you're going to find out what's bright inside of them, what's great inside of them. And he's responding just that way. Good block there by Ramirez. to Reblaze. Defense is now serving him well. Nice job blocking that punch. Left and right! Left and right! <laughs> Sending out the power shot. It was a straight left hand. Coming to the halfway point of this third Chase. round. One, two. One, two. El Terrible is in there clinching a lot, it seems to me. I, don't, I mean, he was stunned earlier, but it just seems like he's tying up. Hey, if it seems like that to you, that's okay. But more importantly, more dangerously for him, it probably seems that way to his opponent. And he's going to take advantage of it. He knows that he's not right. Punch! Punch! Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. Keep going. Ten seconds to go in this third round. And that's the end of round three. Three. I need to see the combinations for him. All right, let's, let's throw the combinations. This fight is way too close. Let's throw a one-two. Okay, listen. You can throw him off with some head movement. That's it. Throw him off with head movement. You gotta watch the water in the corner. Too much. Round number four underway. The Sandman's trailing on Teddy's scorecard in terms of rounds, two rounds to one. However, he has gotten to his opponent. There's a lot of hope ahead. Yeah, there's good news and bad news, though, Joe. We gotta be honest about this. The good news, yeah, he's hurt him. And he knows he could hurt him again. The bad news is maybe he's just waiting to hurt him again, looking for one punch at a time, and his opponent outscores him, outworks him. You see him holding on. He returns the favor with a right hand of his own. Good flush shot upstairs. Halfway through round number four.
He gets to him with an uppercut. Oh, man, he's in rough shape after absorbing that blow. He is damaged badly there. He may hit the floor. Wow! Remember earlier, he was on the canvas. Now he's looking down on his opponent. And we thought it was a bad thing earlier for him. It turned out to be a bad thing for his opponent because he got careless here. One, two, three, four, five. Down he goes, now up he gets. And if he wants to stay up, he's going to have to grab on. Kill a little time. Now his opponent got away from that uppercut. See, the defense pays off as he gets rid of that downstairs. Final 10 seconds. So he scores a knockdown in the last round. Now he gets to settle down and gather himself a bit. Do you go after it? Do you get super aggressive here having had your man hurt? Or do you still have to employ a certain amount of caution? It's kind of like being at the carnival. You know, you just you just hit the bullseye and you got that big, big stuffed animal you can give to your wife or your girlfriend. But now he doesn't want you to go away with that. Oh, no. No, no. He tells you, wait a minute, try again. You could trade that in for something even bigger. But you might lose the one you have already. Hey, That's the question. Power shot. You gotta watch the this guy over balance. The Sandman's corner did a good job during those 60 seconds between rounds. You can tell that he's a fresh fighter, not the fighter that was clearly dazed in the last round. Good way to protect the midsection. Keep moving, keep moving. The Sandman's completely missing the jab, and when that's not there, oh, you're gonna dug yourself a big hole. Now that's like saying, I wanna go swimming. Guess what, there's no water. <laughs> you need water to swim. You need jab to fight, to set things up. He's showing what a skilled fighter he is with the counter punching. Well, the old times used to say when you come in there, when you're in control in there, you can make him do what you want. He made him tie his shoelaces right there. Finish with a hook. Halfway into round number five here. The Sandman swinging and missing like he's at bat right there. That punch was nowhere near his opponent. Work the body. Body Keep doing what you're doing. He had his eyes set on the uppercut, but was unable to land it. Terribles feeling the impact of that powerful hook. You're not focusing. Nice. <laughs> Coming to the end of round number five, last ten seconds. The Sandman's all of a sudden finding his stride here. In that last round, we saw vast improvement. He's still down on your scorecard, right, Teddy? Yeah, I have him down a little bit. But he's he's making a comeback here based on what we just saw. He's doing what he needs to do. You know, he's picking up the pace a little bit, and he's starting to get into the right range. To me, before, he was too far back. Now he's taking the steps to put himself in position where he can start doing the things he needs to do to get back in this fight. Back to action here at the start of this round, which is just part of what has been a very evenly fought fight. One of those fights that's going to be very hard to score. Blocks away that headshot. Really frustrating his opponent now. El Terrible is so defensively sound, it doesn't make for an easy target. No, it doesn't. And it makes for a very frustrating night for his opponent. I see his opponent now. If you notice, he's getting a little tentative. He's afraid to let the punches go because when he misses, he's worried he's going to leave an opening. Get him, get him. One, two. 
One, two! And he ties up on the inside. Reaching the halfway mark of this round. that left hand oh you're doing great Ramirez's punch didn't come close Flush right hand to the head. Not the most accurate uppercut you'll see. El Terrible is showing that he has an understanding about balance, about angles, about footwork. What does his opponent need to understand to deal with it? Well, he has to figure out a way to take the air out of those tires. Give him a couple flats. That's what he's got to do. And there's no better way to give a guy a flat than to go to that body. I like the way he looked at the end of that round. It looks like he's gaining some momentum here. Good competitive fight. And I do believe that he's up on the scorecards. Yeah, I have it the same way. Okay, walk this guy down. Let the ring off and throw some counters. Every time he tries to throw that right, slip to the side and count. He's almost done. You, you had him that round. You, you're in control. Well, the ability to adapt, so important. Who can make the changes now as we're halfway through this scheduled 12-rounder? He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. Looking good. He clinches when he gets to the inside. Ramirez's defense is playing a prominent role in this fight, Teddy. Yes, it is, and specifically what it is is he has good fundamentals. He keeps those hands up real good, you know. They're attached, they're up around his chin, his elbows in. You know, he has a real shell there that's not easy to penetrate. Halfway through the seventh round. He's tired. He just missed that shot up top. Keep doing what you're doing. Seconds to go in the seventh. And that's the end of round seven. Sit down on your punches. Sit down on your punches, all right? We got it. When you get close, uppercut and hook. Get in and throw the uppercut and hook, right? That's what they're there for. Body, then head. Listen, you're not working. You're not working on anything we worked on. You're not doubling your jab. You gotta work this kid, you understand? You gotta keep working. Start of round number eight. El Terrible is in good position. If you look at your scorecard, Teddy, you've got him up slightly, but still a lot of this fight to go. Yeah, you don't become a champion by just winning halfway through. That is the testing of a champion. Nice. That's the testing of a top professional fighter. Keep, keep it up. up, keep that concentration. 
The Sandman's work rate is impressive, Teddy, but his connect percentage is not. No, there's two reasons for it, So One is his opponent. His opponent is pretty smart in there. You know, he's not just standing there saying, hey, hit me. He's moving, he's being smart defensively. The other thing is the punch is a little too wide. Needs to shorten him up a little. Scores up top with a left. 90 seconds to go, halfway through round eight. Well, that was his intention, and that's what he's doing. Not engaging in the fight, but clinching. Oh, you see him with the left of the head there? Needs to improve that accuracy. Missed with the headshot. Oh. Ramirez is giving his opponent fits right here. His head movement is making for such an elusive target. Yes, it is. Now the opponent has to make an adjustment. He has to realize that he's finding air more than he's finding any surface up top. So go downstairs to the place that's not moving, down to the body. That is start to take away some of that head movement. Relax. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. That's it. Now listen, I need you to keep working the body. And when his hands drop, uppercut and hook. Okay? Hope to the point. Another round, and if it keeps up with the rest of them, it'll be closely contested and hard to score. And now he brings the left hand upstairs. from the knockdown, but what we really want to look for is how he reacts in the coming moments of this fight. You got this one! 90 seconds into the ninth round. And now just wasting everybody's time holding That's what on. I want to see. Nice block that time. It was intended to the head. Not able to land the uppercut. In and out. In and out. He's showing what a skilled fighter he is with this counter punching. A well placed left hand up top. Let it Tucks go. those elbows in, blocks the body shot. Ramirez has been hurt. You're doing fine. You're okay. Wow, stunned moments ago. But now somehow, some way, surviving well. You know, Joe, I had a fighter once that got dropped in a round, and he wasn't doing real good up to that point. After that, he fought better. He boxed better, he fought better defensively, and when the fight was over, I said, good job. You know, he whispered to me. He whispered, did I get knocked out? Yeah, he did. He didn't know what had happened. I realized then he was fighting on instinct the rest of the night. Amazing story. 
Milky Bucks, just like that. You're gonna take this one. Start of the round, but Teddy, it could be the end of the fight. He's been knocked down numerous times, including the last round. You're probably right, Joe, but when things are dark, it's just when... Ramirez is ruined with that punch get, get, right get there. Your hands up. Terribles clamped down by a left hand. And yet another big shot comes in. Ramirez is stunned and down. Where did that punch come from? That's exactly what he's wondering. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Teddy, do you think he can go on much longer here? No, he's going to need to grab a little bit. Take a little time off that clock. Protecting his head well with his guard. El Terrible is fighting this fight as if somebody glued the bottom of his shoes to the canvas, Teddy. Somebody should check that right now. If I was in the corner, I'd call the referee over and say, hey, can you check that for me? Ramirez has got a way of just getting away from that punch. Coming to the end of round number 10, 10 seconds to go. You can see he's trying to score. What a big shot. How is this going to go on? Once again, he hits the deck. Well, he's getting practice at it, so he might figure it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's the end of round 10. Keep it up. This guy's never felt a beat like this. Keep the pressure on. Here you go. All right, breathe in. Take a deep breath. Great job that round. All right, deep breath now. Deep breath. Relax. Relax. Are you all right? I need you to keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Don't worry now, all right? I just need you to... I'm sure as a trainer, when you get in a spot like this, there's extra emphasis of letting your charge know just what he's capable of pulling off. I look at your scorecard. He's only trailing by a very small margin here in round number 11. Well, the key right now as a trainer, and you just touched on it, you have to remind your charge, your fighter, of why he's doing it. Things that he understood when it was nice and calm, when everything was very understandable, when he told you in the gym, hey, I want to be champion. You got to remind him of that and say, okay, here's your chance. Here's your moment. To the head he goes with a left hand. Dismisses his opponent's headshot. Missed the target with that hook. Ninety seconds to go in this eleventh round. Ramirez has done a good job there offensively scoring with that left hand. Unable to score with the hook. Sandman scoring with that right hand. He does it again. Teddy, he's really made a commitment to the body work. And you know, that's only half of the problem for his opponent right now because you know what's coming Relax. late. He's going to climb Relax. the ladder. He's going to go here. upstairs.
Wow, a big flush blow, the left hand by El Terrible. Teddy, making predictions in boxing is often a dangerous task, but I'll make one right here that seems pretty obvious to me as we come to the end of that round here. This fight is going to be a brutal display as long as it lasts. It's kind of like going and watching that home run contest. Nobody's trying to hit singles or doubles. You know they're all going for the fences. Last round and it's yours, okay? Keep your distance. Keep your hands up. You got that? Okay, good. Take a deep breath now. That was good. This is the 12th and final round. to keep going on that floor. You have to wonder when the referee's gonna step in now and stop this. Two, three, four, five, six. And it's all over. The Sandman's gunned down yet another opponent, a knockout victory. woke up the fans. Wow, did that wake up the fans. A fight that was assured of heading to the judges' scorecards. It ends by knockout. That's why as a trainer, you like a fight that's close, that's closely contested. There's a little danger going on because then you know that your guy's going to stay alert. Here, there was no danger. He fell asleep, and now he is asleep. It was a good one indeed. And for Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time at the fights.